it's always good to join you um, to talk about our nation. I know last week was nomination day, and I did not uh, have this program. But you know, Ghana is brimming with hope and development all around us today. And he saw the opening of Starbucks, and I know many of the expats in our country and. Maybe uh, some Guyanese are excited about the Starbucks, but don't forget your Demico coffee and Oasis and College House coffee. They are all great coffees. But it, it's exciting to see new investments in our country. And, you know, this last few days, we also uh, witnessed the External Affairs Minister out of India. Many new things happening in our country. Uh, when, you know, you see the president uh, commissioning a ferry, may not sound like a, a big event, but it is a big event. When you're connecting our regions, for example, Region 1, which is a, a very rich region in, in natural resources and agriculture, connecting now with the other regions in Guyana, potentially connecting to the Caribbean uh, community, it shows where our development plans becomes integrated. It's not one individual uh, region that is benefiting. His vision and uh, His Excellency's vision for Guyana development across the board is is very unique. It is it is built on what I see and and folks have written about and and experiences on transparency, accountability. Whenever a, a company that is successful, like a Starbucks coming into Guyana and expand, they have a vision of where they want to be, what revenues they want to see, what type of employer employment and their quality of, of products that they deliver. It's no difference than His Excellency. When he looks across Guyana, his government across Guyana and determines where our trajectory of growth will be, how does every region benefit from plans and policies of his government, how do we deal with the international world, uh, you know, for example, India, who is on the move to be the third richest economy in the world, and our own Guyana that is being built as a Caribbean tiger economy leadership and direction and vision and how do we and all of our citizens enjoy the prosperity that is among, coming among all of us and how do we grab that wealth that is being executed and being uh, delivered to us. It's going to take a gradual step to get to the next level and we're all working together and what makes that even better? And as I mentioned last week, Monday was election, um, the nomination day. And uh, the People Progressive Party um, did extremely well in providing the 2,000 candidates plus that is needed across Guyana for NDCs and, and town elections, city council elections. And they were able to provide a very diversified group of individuals that cuts across Guyana. As Dr. Dr. Jagdio said, is, it is the face of Guyana. And that's something that we should be proud of, of a political party that not just speaks about diversity and unity, but exercise it in the highest level of policy making in our country. So when you look at those lists that the PPP fielded across the country, what I think surprised the opposition, and the opposition leader, Norton, I think was so shocked. One, he didn't even get to, to fill all of the positions, nomination that he needed. I think he probably got up to 47%. And then went on a rampage about what happened uh, with the PPP slate. I was in Region 10, uh, in Linden, and when I looked across at the candidates that came on board, both in supporting and, and as candidates in Linden, I think it shocked the Lindenites that are PNC uh, supporters. 
you know, in terms of even just the nomination day, they had maybe 15 people that supported them in, in presenting their candidates. You may not think it's important, but why is it important? Because folks across Guyana, regardless of your political voting patterns of the past, have decided, not realized only, but have decided that they need to be part of Guyana's development. And folks, if you were a signature, whether it's in Region 5, whether it's in, in Linden, uh, that you were a PNC supporter and you sign in support of the PPP candidates, don't be intimidated. You don't need to go as Norton is telling you, threatening you, whatever the, the PNC folks are doing out there, trying to get people to say that I didn't sign the paper. Really? Think of it. If you sign it, there will be intimidation. Many in Linden, I can tell you when I was there, come to me and they, they said, you know, we will be faced with challenges. But what it takes and what you have done, whether you signed as a supporter of a candidate, whether you're going to go vote for a candidate, whether you are a candidate and you came from the PNC side, it is the courage that you have shown, the boldness that you have shown, and it will take that same courage and boldness for every one of us across Guyana as we go to the polls on June 12th to vote for our local candidates for election, whether it's the city council, whether it's the NDC, it will take courage and conviction to say, I'm going to put my ex to the PPP candidates. And why? In politics, we all can have rhetoric. I can be up here and tell you we're the greatest party and you must vote for us. APNU is going to tell you that we are this and we are that and you must vote for them. But what we bring to the table and what the candidates will present across our country is what is happening today. If you look back 2020 to 2023 and you just look at what happened, the red wave that swept our nation last Monday and how many surprises that people saw the former mayor, for example, of Georgetown as a candidate for the PPP wearing a red t-shirt. Some said, oh, they may have sold out or they got paid. It takes courage and boldness to step away from something that you've been with all your life. It will take that same courage and boldness for you to step away and put your ex somewhere else. And I'm back to the why. If you look at what has happened in Georgetown and Linden and Bartica and all the other towns in Madia, New Amsterdam, and you looked at what has not happened in the decades of your voting life. Some of you may be 22, some may be 18, some may be 60, right? And you, what you have seen in your new voting or voting rights over the decades, you have not noticed any major development that you can pinpoint that has happened to Linden or Georgetown coming from the mayor and city council. Let me know. Whatever central government has done, take that out of the picture. What has the mayor and city council done for you since you started voting for them or not voting for them? Georgetown, City Hall falling down, central government had to step in. Linden, the last government stifled the economy, shut down the call center. Hundreds of folk lost their job. There was no economic activity in Linden, in Bartica, and in, 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 in Madia and other places. Then look at what 
central government has done for Guyana in just the short less than three years? Where and what have we put into development? We can repeat it every time we speak. Ranger government put on 200 plus taxes on us. That was taken away. We have one of the largest budgets in his history in 2023 with no new taxes. We have better wages, minimum wage, threshold, have all gone up, pension, no vat and water and electricity, and, and, and increase grants and activities throughout the country. True development in investments, whether it's in the oil and gas industry, we're up to three FPSOs, moving to 600,000 barrels today. As revenues increase in the oil sector, you have seen how we have put it back into the system. We're building new roads, miles and thousands of miles of new roads within the five-year period that is increasing the development and betterment of our lives. Whether it's in Victory Valley in Linden, where the folks have nice walkways and, and roads to the community activities of basketball, you know, to Wismar, to other places across the country, in New Amsterdam, where central government has put in place new developments in the city of Georgetown, fixing all of the, the city streets so that we can get a better quality of driving or walking or whatever it may be. That is what the PPP administration is on a daily basis, ensuring that our measurement of success is not the rhetoric of Norton, is not the rhetoric of who didn't sign the supporter list, it's not a rhetoric of the dishonesty. He's divorced from reality. It is not that. We are presenting what we have done and what we plan to do. So as the candidates go out in their campaign trail, they will be telling you what we have done as central government, what we are doing in local government, what we plan to do, and how and when we will do it. We will deliver. The great part about local elections, it is a cycle. So you get a chance to say, I've done 57 years of the PNC in Georgetown. I'm going to kick them out. Kick out the PNC after 57 years. Give the PPP a chance. Elections is normally a two-year cycle, plus or minus, based on the circumstances and, and activity in the country at the time. But you have a chance to vote us out. And we're bold enough, we are bold enough to tell you, kick the PNC out, put the PPP in, because they have not delivered, we have delivered, and if we don't, our measurement of success is not there, then you have a chance to do the same thing to us. We're bold enough to give you that challenge and be part of that challenge. I can tell you, whether it was PPP or PNC, if I was living in Georgetown, as a citizen of Georgetown, I cannot independently, consciously go to the polls and vote for the PNC-led council. All I have to do is look at whether my trash was picked up on time, whether the drains were clean, whether the cocos were open, whether City Hall was falling down or not whether there was corruption in City Hall, all of that I would have to decide, wait a minute, what am I voting for? And as I campaign in Linden, it's the same thing I tell Lindeners. What are you voting for? What did you get? What could Norton and his 47% of the candidate list come and tell you what they did and what they plan to do? It's... You know, if, if, if we have the, the, the program, I think, I can't remember the, the full name of it, but where we go to laugh, this would be a live show. Norton would put on a live show to make us laugh. What has, what have, has the PNC done in the 57 years in Georgetown, in Linden, since it became a town, Nothing. Nothing. 
We are looking forward to this election, local election. Central government is behind the local candidates. They have the ability to see the national plan, how Guyana GDP is growing, how we are ensuring we maintain a, a, as limited cost of living as possible and inflation um, going up. How do we put programs in place to ensure prices um, remain uh, competitive and, and, and affordable? Every day, the financial plans, the analysis, going from the Honorable Minister, Dr. Ashley Singh, how do you look at the funding stream? How do we look at the export market? You know, I had a, a large delegation from China in this last week into Guyana. And, you know, they, we actually um, took them to the new GMC store in Rob Street. Because they were asking, you know, where and why are Guyana products not in China? And they wanted our products in China. And when we took them to the new GMC store, they were very impressed with, you know, multiple products of our coconut oil. You know, so as we export, then if, if you get a country like China buying your coconut oil and it takes off, think of the, the currency, foreign currency coming into Guyana. Think of our opportunities that we would need to grow more employment, grow more coconut trees, more processing plants. And that's when you listen to the, the president's vision in terms of how we are developing every sector, right? What is the oil revenues? Whether Kaichor News beats up the government every day, it doesn't really matter. There are papers to sell money, to sell papers to make money. Okay, that's their business. Whatever they put on front page, it don't matter if it's true or not, if it's the same message, they're there to make money. Our job is to deliver our commitments to our people of our country. The president has said it many times. His measurement of success is prosperity for all. How do we move one notch up? How do we move two notches up? And that's how his plan for Guyana is being executed every single day. I, I started a program, Guyana is brimming with hope and development. Guyana is building the Caribbean tiger economy where when it goes, when it, it gets into food security, not just being us, us being self-sufficient, but how do we feed the Caribbean? The, the ship that is, being go, is going to Northwest, I, I mentioned about other ships going to Barbados and Trinidad, getting our goods to market on time every single day, we would want to grow more. As we get into cheaper energy, I said the president is a smart guy. If you think of it, this is a very well orchestrated plan by the PPP administration. How that being? Every sector is being developed and modernized. The agriculture sector, as we improve the, the growing of soya bean and corn, one, we become self-sufficient and stock feed. We can then invest in more poultry. So that's an expansion. That's happening right in front of our eyes. The president has introduced millets that is going to be tested in Guyana. Given the whole wheat crisis of the U Ukraine, what has happened with the logistic system across the world, prices have gone up. We now need to ensure that we are prepared for any future crisis. President has, has outlined new industries. Imagine when we buy roses and flowers, it comes from Miami. We're paying more money. Imagine why not growing the whole industry of flowers in Guyana. We're talking about hemp production. Hemp is something that is taking off in the world. We're going to put a lot of time and effort into the hemp. So agriculture is one of those sectors that I advise all of us to pay attention. How could you get involved in agriculture? How could you see your development? You look at the, the, the energy sector. We know the, the um, amount of oil we're taking out is being increased. Tourism. The Minister of Tourism, I think, just visited Costa Rica. Costa Rica is the leading South America country 
in ecotourism. We are right there. We are going to be a leader, and we are even going to be better than Costa Rica. Why? We've got the Caribbean right next to us. It's all white sand, blue waters. When people come to the, these sites, they enjoy it. But what if it's five days in Barbados on the sand, blue waters, and two days in the jungle? I tell you, you travel and you talk to the, the, the tourists, that's an exciting twinning of a product. Five days on the beach, two days in the jungle. We're not far from Barbados. We got a direct flight now from St. Lucia, from London. So tourism, ecotourism, get involved. You're living next to a creek. You're living in a village, an Amerindian village. Come together. Look at how you can work with each other and how could we attract and how could we make that money. I started out with Starbucks. It's a great investment in Guyana, a large investment. We welcome foreign investors. But at the same time, don't forget the Demico coffee. Right? Don't forget our local businesses, how we need to support our local businesses and ensure that they survive and they can get new opportunities so all of us can have jobs. We signed a deal this week with an Indian company that is going to be setting up a healthcare call center. So if you're in the healthcare sector, you understand medical terminology, and you can transcribe doctor's notes from United States, there's a job opportunity for you. And there are many call centers in Essequibo, in Barbies, that we're going to be paying attention to, West Coast, Etushan, that we are going to promote. These are job opportunities that we have. Take advantage. Seven new ho uh, hotels going up, branded hotels, nine total, and one big announcement this week with one in Barbies at a, a 200-room-plus hotel. Imagine the jobs that is going to come. Are you ready? Are you going to be a chef? Are you going to Carnegie School of Economics? Are you trying to become a customer service representative at a call center? Are you looking to move from, you could have been a waiter, a waitress at Pegasus for the last five years. You can now figure out, I'm going to move into a management position. I'm going to go get, do some project management under the goal program. I'm going to apply for a management level job at one of these new hotels. That's how you move up in income. You don't stay where you're at, at the level. You've got to look at where the opportunities are coming down the line. And that's why I say to everyone, when you listen to our president, when you listen to our vice president, our prime minister, our ministers of government, what are they saying? And that's where you get a chance to see where you are going. You know, so if you're out there and you're very somewhat technical, Imagine we need thousands of welders in Guyana, and we've got to then find. We can't even find drivers for trucks these days because the job market is being executed very well. People are taking their jobs. But what we want Guyanese to do is to move one step above what you think you can do. As I mentioned, the waitress, if you've been in Marriott or Pegasus or any other hotel for five years, go take one of Dr. Ali's goal program. Sign up, project management. Do a, a, a short course if you want to. Learn how to manage, uh, you know, or start out as a cook and figure out how you become the chef. These are all areas, again, where we get an opportunity. Engineering schools, hospitality, you know, who's going to do the laundry systems as we get more people in our country? So let's take the wealth first before anyone else comes in. And that's what we are looking for. So this election is about us, the locals. It is about us, the locals. We get an opportunity for every NDC across Guyana, for every town across Guyana to get a chance to put the People's Progressive Party in place to deliver on what we will commit to in every town and in every village, every area, just like we are doing across the country at the national level. And I mentioned earlier in the program, 
It requires courage of your conviction, boldness. You would get beat up from the PNC. Norton going to, you know, try to intimidate you. The fact that he cannot, or no PNC candidate, and guess what, AFC say, well, we don't want anything to do with it. We can't even win a, a seat. So we're not going. We're done. The AFC is absolutely done. Cannot even get a candidate on the list. So they pulled out. PNC tried. 47%. They can't even make half of the list. They are on the run. The, PN, the AFC is lost. The PNC is on the run. They cannot deliver on any promise that they may have for a town or a village. So they're on the run. The PPP is here to ensure that we take the reins of those areas we don't have and we deliver for every citizen of the constituency. And it's going to be an exciting time the next two years as we move Guyana nationally, as we move Guyana locally, come together with a common purpose, a common vision to deliver on programs that will benefit us, the, the ordinary Guyanese. There's no such thing as the, all of us are ordinary Guyanese. We want a chance to move one step higher. And every time we get an opportunity, we want to take it one step higher. It's, a great, it's great working in this administration. I can tell you I've learned a lot. I believe in our vision. I believe in our commitment. I believe in our one Guyana. I see it all the time. When I look at, at the PNC candidate list, it's a one-sided list. They can't attract a diversity of Guyanese because the folks don't believe it. The PPP list is a diversified list. It's a list that tells you that one Guyana is in effect. It's working. Unity, diversity, the color of your skin doesn't matter. The texture of your hair doesn't matter. Your religious belief doesn't matter. We are in this together. And as you come and you think through the next few weeks to get to June 12th an election, remember, just do the tea table as I always says. What has the PNC done for you in 57 years? What has the PPP done for you in the short three years? Let's forget all other time. Let's just look at three years and look at where Guyana is today, where it was, what we inherited in 2020, rigged elections, poor policies, taxes, vendors, you don't have to worry about what the PPP will do. We believe in the small person, benefit from everything. We are improving the way you're able to sell. You just go down to the seawall and see the difference in what is happening. Guyana is brimming with hope and development. We're in exciting times. Let's be bold. Let's stand up for our rights. We're we going to make our own decisions. But we want to ensure that all of us continue to live in peace and harmony, unity, and remember that our children are ju not just our future, they are today, and we must take care of them to get a better future. Thank you, and God bless you. That was a paid program, and the views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and other speakers, and do not reflect the views and opinions of TVG Channel 28.